Okay, chapter one in your textbook, Introducing Public Speaking. This is a thrilling chapter. If you're struggling to read it, if you're struggling to sleep at night, Daniel, this will be a great text. It's going to prop open. You ought to be out on the first page. You know, I mean, that's how, that's how it goes. Um, pages six and seven talk about a couple of things. There is a relationship between a speaker and an audience, right? As a, as a college professor, um, when I get to the point where everybody looks glazed over, right? Like you look like a glazed donut. Um, I either go into humor mode or I probably stop because it's a relationship. I, uh, I want to have the respect of my audience and don't want to be, I can't stand teachers that teach to the bell just because there's a bell. We actually don't have a bell here, but I don't like that. Uh, no big deal. Um, to me, to go to the bell or not to go to the bell. I share my message. I try and respect my audience and um, go from there. Public speaking is audience-centered. I'm trying to connect with Daniel. I'm trying to connect with Dylan. I'm trying to connect with James. I'm also trying to connect with Brianna and Nadia and Destiny and Chance. I'm not going to do that across the board, but public speaking is audience centered. I want you to walk away with a message at the end that I was trying to share. Um, page eight, uh, the spoken word is emphasized. Now here's a small problem that we have with public speaking, okay? There are three words that we associate with uh, public speaking. They're ethos, logos, and pathos. If you have a pencil and paper, you will need to give these back to me at some point. Ethos, pathos, logos. You will not have to spell them, you just have to know them. Ethos is the ethical appeal of a speaker. You know what I am talking about even if you don't know the word ethos. Because you do it. Daniel did it, James did it, Nadia did it. You walked in this classroom, none of you, well, Daniel had actually met me for five seconds before, but uh, most of you had never laid eyes on me before. I started teaching class. We connected or we did not, that is ethos. You made a decision. This guy is okay, this guy is not. It's hard to quantify. It's not because I'm dressed cool, it's not, there is just an ethical appeal of the speaker. Do you believe me? Do you want to believe me? Do you want to listen to me? Do you want to? Ethos, the ethical appeal of the speaker. Logos. Um, logos is the logical portion of the speech. It's, uh, for you as a pre-law guy, right? You know, that's the, you're, you're, this is the case you're trying. Here's the points I need to make, uh, and I need to get those across, and if a witness isn't giving those back to me, I need to keep going until I draw that up, right? There needs to be this logical appeal. Um, I'm sharing information. Uh, it needs to make sense. I need to figure it out. I need to get it. What is Destiny trying to tell me, okay? Logos. Pathos is the third. somewhat similar to ethos, but the other day when you did an introductory speech for me in here, we had a pretty good amount of logo, pathos going on. Pathos is an emotional appeal. Several, several of you told stories about um, foster care or adopted care or, uh, thank you, Jason, mm -hmm. or uh, partners transitioning or whatever it may be difficulties that you've had in your life. That's an emotional appeal. Now, I'm gonna give you three statistics. 7% of a speech is one of those three things. Anybody care to guess which one? Ethos, pathos, or logos? 7% adds up to? Ethos. One vote ethos, any other votes? Pathos. 
Here's the hard reality. Hard reality is that 7% of the effectiveness of a speech comes from the logical appeal or locus. We want to make it about the words. It is not. I'm not saying, Daniel, words aren't important. If you've got a, you're defending someone, you've got to get them, you know, a not guilty verdict. Obviously, words matter. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm saying that with increasing importance, the words are not as important as whether or not I connected emotionally, pathos, which is 33%. 60% of the effectiveness of a speech is ethos. Do I believe you? Do I want to listen to you? Do I care about what you have to say? You have this amazing device in your pocket called a smartphone that if I don't pass the ethos test, you're on that in seconds, typically. And you have tuned me out. And no matter what I thought we were talking about, I'm talking, but you're not listening. Some people are hearing, but not taking in. 7% logos, 33% pathos, 60% ethos. I'll talk to you a lot in this class about how you carry yourself. How do you do what you do? Because destiny is decided. Destiny, am I okay? Okay. Okay. Have I gotten, have I reached A level? How long did that take you to decide? Just a couple minutes. I'm telling you, from the time that you get up here and do a three minute speech, we are making a decision. Now, that only lasts as far as the topic at hand. So when we get into the topic here in a minute, it's gonna matter, right? If Destiny's talking about, um, gosh, I don't know, being an Enneagram 8, something she is, uh, she may get a greater, and if you tried to talk about being an Enneagram 4, which Dylan is, then there may not be credibility, we may tune you out, right? So it's subject and speaker based. But public speaking emphasizes the spoken word. Now, I'm going to suggest to you, um, it is incredibly important how you bring the spoken word. All right, your book also suggests that public speaking is usually a prepared presentation. Prepared. People who wing it don't do as well as people who don't wing it. I know that you will try and disagree with me on that, some of you. I promise you it is. There's a very important graphic on page 19 in your textbook. You need to be able to give it back to me. Looks like this box. It's this black box here. Okay? Basically what that says is that James and I are here today. How is your vaccine? Everything okay? Okay, yeah, I got you, I did too. And that, that there's a speaker who's the source and there's a, a, an audience member who is the receiver, right? That I'm giving a message and James is giving me feedback. Now, James yawns ad nauseum. If I can tell James is on his phone and James has checked out, James has given me feedback, very clear feedback. I ain't listening to you. We don't want that. What we're trying to do is create this idea of shared meaning. And the reality is that there's all this noise in the communication process. And by that, I don't necessarily mean other voices. I am talking about the fact that, did you eat breakfast, Destiny? Yes. Did you eat breakfast, Chance? No. No. Do you ever eat breakfast? Not really. Not really. Are you hungry right now? No. Anybody hungry right now? James is. Naughty is. That's noise. You know why? Because you're thinking about, what are you going to eat? You're hungry. It's noise. If you got in a fight with your partner um, and you're thinking about that, that's noise. If Brianna has an assignment due, do you have a class after this? Okay. she got class after this. she got another assignment due. And she's thinking about the assignment. That's noise, right? There's all this noise going on. It may or not, may not be actual like... You know, noise, I'm not talking about that. There's a, there is a disconnect between Brianna and I. Now, that's all here on page 19. Make sure that you can offer that 
back to me in the next couple of pages. We'll break out what all that means. Make sure you know that. All right, you can flip uh, in your textbook. Over to 26 and 27. 26 and 27 talks about something I talked about the other day, just a little bit, which is worldview and critical thinking. You have been raised on something that we are calling reality TV. There was nothing real in it. It was all staged. But you were raised with that reality that, that we could put a camera on you and we'd call that reality TV and it'd be good. I don't think that promotes critical thinking. Um, our worldview matters. We believe what we believe at 18 years old largely because of where we've been. This has not always been the case. On page 23 in your textbook, it will tell you that in 1923, less than 100 years ago, Calvin Coolidge delivered the first presidential address on radio. Now stop and think about that for a hot minute. Less than 100 years ago, for the first time, a U.S. president was able to communicate with a mass audience at one time for the first time, 1923. Less than 100 years later, President Trump spent most of his presidential career tweeting. It's a different day. That has not always been the case. In fact, it's pretty recent. Uh, your textbook will also tell you on, 20, on page 23 that 20 years after President Coolidge delivered the first radio address, for the first time, uh, Harry S. Truman delivered the first televised presidential address where we got to see what was happening. It was like 70 years ago, y'all. It's pretty recent. I'm 51. It's not that long ago. No old jokes, please. Um, I didn't like that you laughed at that, Jason. Um, that was not good. That's what I want you to know at, out of chapter one in the textbook. You need to read back over pages say 18 to 22 and you need to know the, that section of the textbook all right now this is where the textbook and i diverge okay um i teach a different method this is what i need you to score I didn't write it. A guy named Ken Davis did. Stands for subject, central theme, objective sentence, rationale, resources, and evaluation. This will you will do this for every assignment that we do in this class. Score. Next Monday, you're going to need to bring me uh, a score sheet. You will find it in the files of the Canvas shell, filled out, ready to go, with these items. I want to go over it today now. Here's what, here's what I'm promising. We will go over your first score sheet together. Won't leave you hanging out there in the dark, okay? Because you're gonna, Monday you're gonna come in and go, I wasn't really sure how to do this. Right, that's because we're gonna work, up, 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 work over that in class. Jason, are you in the uh, uh, PowerPoint screen? All right, take me forward to the next slide, if you would, sir. Okay. No. There you go. Can I control you? I can't. Okay, you're going to have to push yeah, forward. Sir. All right. Subject. James, what is something that you're passionate and knowledgeable about? Say that again. Special effects makeup. Special effects makeup. Love it. Special effects makeup. Sounds like a great speech. Okay. Nadia, what's something that you're passionate and knowledgeable about? Give me one thing. Something that is exciting to you. Music. Is that what I heard? Yeah, good. Brianna, something that you are passionate and knowledgeable about. Child care. Dylan. Hand-drawn animation. Destiny. Um, the medical field. 
medical field. Chance. Books. Dill. Daniel. Passionate and knowledgeable about. Fine, ethics, it's a perfectly good term. Subject, I told you the other day, there's really not anything that you cannot talk about. You just need to be aware that your worldview may clash with somebody else's and there's gonna be question and answer. You need to be ready for it, okay? Subject, what are you passionate and knowledgeable about? Chase, you go to the next one, please. All right, within every subject, Destiny gave me a good one. Destiny said, uh, I believe the medical field. Daniel said, ethics. Those are broad categories, right? We're gonna have to narrow that down uh, in order to talk about that. So within a broader subject of ethics or within the medical field, Destiny, what is a, a, a more narrow portion of that broad category you might wanna talk about? Um, pediatrics. Pediatrics, okay. Now, I, I'm not picking, I'm gonna suggest that as we work through this speech, the subject might actually be pediatric medicine and we might come up with a new central theme. That may still, medicine, pediatrics may still be too broad, right? Because you're only gonna get three to maximum five minutes. That's really not actually all that long to talk about a subject, right? Ethics, give me a, give me a, a central theme within the broader subject of ethics, Daniel. Human awareness. Human awareness, okay, again. Subject might be human awareness, central theme might be within that to get us down, to get the funnel narrow enough uh, to deal with in three to five minutes. Are you with me so far? So this is serving as a funnel. It's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna tell you what to talk about. Two, it's gonna tell you what not to talk about. There's nothing worse than, than kind of tracking with the speaker and he or she going rogue on you and you are suddenly out in left field. Okay, thanks for going next. This is the most difficult part of this. I'm gonna ask you to write an objective sentence that you are never, ever going to speak to me in your speech. An informative speech uses the word can. A persuasive speech uses the word should. This first one is informative. Every something. Now, you can say every person, especially on an informative speech. Chance is gonna talk about books. Again, that might be too broad. We may have to narrow that down. Is there a specific central theme within books, Chance? Is there a genre you prefer? Fiction. Okay, books, fiction. Again, might not be narrow enough. Might be fiction and then fantasy or something like that, whatever. There's not a right or wrong answer. We just need to get it down to a manageable amount of information. So let's say every person can what? Can read fiction in order to gain something, learn something, understand something, grow in a certain way. And you'll notice that in parentheses, um, I have the word backpack. Did anybody bring a backpack today, just out of curiosity? You have one, Destiny, could I borrow it just real quick? Now, I'm not gonna go digging in Destiny's bag, because that's not cool. Um, oh, very cute, by the way. Um, but she's probably got all her stuff, right? Now there's textbooks in here maybe, there's, there's notebooks in here, there's, I don't know, lip balm, there's, uh, I don't know, there's a water bottle right here I notice. I mean, I don't know what are the things that Destiny really feels like, man, I gotta have that on me to make it through the day, right? Without those, I'm lost. Might be medicine, might be just all kind of things here in the backpack. That is the way that the backpack serves in this sense. Once you have these things in a backpack and you have completed the sentence, you could go ahead and give this speech. So, borrowing chance. Every person can read fiction in order to understand the world in three important ways. And there's your backpack. I have three important ways. I'm gonna make sure those things are in this backpack. What are those three important ways? Well, those comes back to your logo. That's your logical appeal. Now, a lot of people work really hard on the, on the points of that speech, right? I mean, you can rhyme them, you can use alliteration, you can do all kinds of things. Bottom line, I wanna remember them, but it starts with the container that they go in. 
And it's a little bit of a struggle the first time I teach this method to get a handle on the objective sentence. Because it feels really wooden. It feels you feel constrained. Like, I don't want to force it down. But if you'll do it, once you've had this, you will know exactly what you're going to do up here, and you're going to be that much more confident. Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for your trust in me and letting me borrow your backpack. All right, Chase, go to the next one. Rationale are the points of the speech. It's your logo. It's your logical appeal. Now, how many, how many points can you have in a speech? One, as many as you want. The, sun, the, the correct answer lies in all of those answers. You have three to five minutes. How many points can you actually make and communicate your topic in three to five minutes? Because if you get to five minutes, I'm going to say, wrap it up. And I'll give you, you know, a few seconds to finish that point up, and then you're done. Three to five minutes. How many points? I'm going to suggest, I think you could do one. You're going to be really elaborate if you do one. Um... Uh, I think you can do not more than five in five minutes. If you think about introduction, think about closing, and you think about five points at you know 30 seconds or so, I think that's about all you've got to make that. Now, I'm not gonna grade you down. If Daniel says, I oh, man, I got seven awesome points, I'm not giving up on any of them. Dylan says I've got 19 points and I'm gonna cram them in there like a boss. I mean, I, I'm not inherently gonna grade you down because you didn't use five as a max, it's just going to be whether or not you can effectively use those. Rationale. Go to the next one. Resources are not the sources you use to research the speech. Are you with me? That's not what that is. Do not tell me that you went to uh, ethics.com uh, or, uh, you know, medical industry.com or something. That's not what, not what I'm asking you. Um, for those of you who are watching, the gal holding the camera is my daughter. For those of you in the room, this is my daughter. She's 16. Um, she's been a game changer for me um, as a dad. To be a dad of a daughter um, is a completely different thing. My son is 22. Um, and he's a great young man as well. But when the, a guy, I think, becomes the dad of a daughter, life changes. I am fiercely protective. Not that I'm not protective of my son. It's just a different thing. And if I want you to understand how I feel about her, you would have to come in my office. You'd have to see pictures. You'd have to see us interact. Those are all resources. The fact that she's here, several of you... Uh, in the room this morning have, have been adopted or you've been in foster care. Um, obviously, when you see Lily and I together, you know that, that, that probably there's an adoptive situation going on because we don't look alike. Uh, those are resources. PowerPoints are resources. Handouts are resources. Had a young lady do a tremendous speech a couple years ago uh, on all the discounts available to college students. She literally went to every business in BB, Arkansas and asked them what discount they gave for college students and created a handout. It was awesome. Because you can about get money back in this town if you're an ASU BB student. I mean, you can get a discount nearly everywhere. And it was a great handout. Don't overlook a handout. Those are resources. They aren't sources. Can I draw the difference there? Sources is where you're pulling, you've researched and you're pulling it from. All right, one more, Jason. Evaluation. It's the last letter of score. Evaluation is the name of a person. Um, who do you know in the medical field? Do you know someone by every single person ever. Okay, but you know someone, and you can't think of their name right now, but we're going to say that's Jane Doe, right, because they're in the medical field. You're going to put Jane Doe down here, because what this means is, I want you to go share your speech before you give it with someone who will help you evaluate it. Here's the problem. Anybody have mental health difficulties like me? You suffer from anxiety, depression, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I am really well versed on this topic. I can start now 
You'll miss lunch. You might miss dinner. I can keep talking on this subject. Well, the problem is I probably know too much about this subject, right? I'm, I'm too well versed. And I may start throwing out like acronyms and names and you're like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Same thing happens. Anybody in the nerd kingdom out there? Any, anybody king of the nerd kingdom? Right. Y'all get into language that the rest of us simply do not understand. Like we know certain things, like we know Harry Potter, but you don't want to stop there. You want to give some like obscure character within the Harry Potter canon, or you want to talk about uh, I'm Slytherin, or I am Hufflepuff, or I, you know, language, right? You need, and so maybe you need someone to evaluate your nerd kingdom topic who's not a member of the nerd kingdom. So that you can go, does this like make sense to you? Maybe you need someone who doesn't know anything about the topic at hand so you can go, am I starting too deep? Um, we had one a couple of years ago and he was on uh, computer stuff, which is kind of Greek to me. And he was in bites and rams and, you know, goats and sheep. He wasn't really, but, you know, words that I didn't understand. And I looked around at the classroom around and I was like, they don't get it either, which did make the old man feel a little bit better about himself, honestly, at the time. Uh, but, you know, someone who will help you evaluate the speech. It can be a friend, it can be a parent, but they should either have relevant knowledge or by not having relevant knowledge, that qualifies them as an evaluator. Does that make sense? You with me? Like you need someone who can help you say, in three to five minutes, can I get this across to Destiny who doesn't care? Right? Can I do that? Or is she going to go, oh, yawn at me the whole time? So, score, subject, central theme, objective sentence, rationale, or the points of the speech, resources, which are the things that bring light and color. They're the things that make you want to listen, right? Um, and evaluation. Who is the person who is going to help you evaluate this speech? 